good morning and or afternoon or evening, depending on where you're at. We are about to start our glorious and highly talented Mr. Austin's art stream, which is labeled iconic. Kyle, James, you want to tell us why it's iconic other than it's always so great when James says art? Um, absolutely. Well, it started from an idea um, that I think Kyle and I both had, but separately, where uh, we were looking for a way to, to have uh, sort of a line of characters that could be, that, that will exist in the Earth and world and be, could be featured as sort of the archetypical or the iconic uh, uh, version of a, of a sword master or a, or a sky raider or a fill in the blank here. So when I, uh, I, 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 I told Kyle about the idea and, and he had said, that, oh my gosh, yes, we, uh, you know, I think Kyle can correct me, but I think he had already had a, a similar thought. And so we thought, all right, well, let's, let's take the opportunity and we'll collaborate and we'll try to come up with some iconic, some new, some, some new uh, iconic earthed on characters that we could use in some ad adventures or people could use at home and that sort of thing. That's, I think that's, that's what this is going to be all about. So we're going to do one of them today. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, similar to what uh, Dungeons and Dragons did, where there's the the iconic uh, characters for the different classes that they use in, in lots of art as a shorthand for like, this is a fighter and stuff like that. Um, you know, giving James a chance to have his iconic shorthand for this is a sky reader or what have you, and then using that as, uh, you know, taking it a step further of this is maybe this Sky Raider, and then we could start giving him a personality, and then maybe he could comment on the text, and then if he gets his own plot, you know, we could do that as well. Yeah. Um, so let me share my screen here. I'll start by sharing my screen. Um, and uh, I'm told Kyle has been has been reading up on some of the lore here. I beg your pardon. I am actually going to share a screen, not a window. Here we go. Screen one. We're going to go live. There we go. All right. So we're starting with basically a blank canvas. I had sort of grabbed this uh, reference image earlier. Um, for for my own, uh, I, I made an executive decision. I wanted to start with um, a, a race and a discipline that were distinctly earthed on. You know, because as much as I love orcs and elves, I love I love them all. But uh, Earth Dawn has some some really unique player uh, player character races that uh, name giver races uh, that uh, that I wanted to, that I wanted to start with to show off what makes Earth Dawn uh, unique. So uh, just in an executive decision, I said let's go with a let's go with a troll sky raider uh, was how we were going to uh, how we're going to start trolls. It's it's one of my favorite uh, Earth Dawn races i think i don't know they're just they're just super big and super tall and uh anyway i love trolls so um what we're what we're going to start with just from an an artistic point of view here um we're going to start with our uh with our big shape and the biggest shape if you sort of think of probably the best art advice i think i've ever gotten um was uh was a an idea that uh they said you know you're you're thinking of this in in two dimensions don't think of it don't think of this like a drawing what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of it like a sculptor as you uh as, as you go and so basically what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start by, by putting our big old marble slab down on the canvas here and then we're gonna slowly and when, I mean, not that you can add things to a marble slab, but we will slowly chip away or add um, bits as as we go along, and our uh, character will start to will start to take shape as we as we go. Um, so we got our we got our troll physique here. Actually, I'm probably going to make him a little smaller. I went just a little too big. Um, one of the things I like about trolls are that their horns they make me think of like the make me think of the gargoyles every time i every every time i think of them and uh for anybody who's read the player's guide recently it's actually says in the player's guide that trolls horns frequently 
grow in asymmetrical uh, shapes and and patterns, and that's 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 cool. But I think I think I'm going to try to keep my trolls' horns largely symmetrical, just because just because I like it that way. And then, uh, in terms of the Sky Raider, I was hoping I might lean on Kyle to talk a little bit about um, about about Sky Raiders as we start to, as we start going a little a little deeper into this visually. Uh, yeah, sure. So as uh, James is sketching out some stuff, uh, I did do a little bit of homework before this, uh, and I, I prepared a folder with various pictures and snatched some uh, text from different places. So uh, obviously, a, a discipline can mean lots of things uh, to lots of different people. Uh, but from the uh, core rules of fourth edition Earth Dawn, which is what we're you know basing uh, this iconic idea off of, uh, it talks about how Sky Raiders are ruthless pirates. Uh, and then it also talks about how Sky Raiders are proud and show great loyalty to other Sky Raiders, unless the Raider belongs to an enemy clan or moot. Um, so those two ideas, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how at odds I feel like those uh, two concepts are. Uh, and also, not all Sky Raiders need to be trolls. So not all Sky Raiders need to be in a clan or moot. But since our guy is a troll, we don't need to get into the complexity of all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually started uh, digging into uh, various different um, moots and trying to find uh, specific approaches uh, different groups take to maybe being a Sky Raider. Um, so I was thinking that maybe our guy could be from uh, one of the clans that makes up the Thunder Sky moot. Um, because the Thunder Sky moot uh, comes from the uh, Sky Toucher Mountain, which is the tallest and most majestic mountain in the Twilight Peaks. And they're like um, the, the biggest, baddest uh, Sky Raiders around, basically. So I figured if we're going iconic, we should go all in on iconic. So this this guy could be from like the the tribe. I like uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> what um so here's here's a fun question that I I don't know mm -hmm. if we ever if we ever looked into this in, into the lore or something. One of the interesting things that I was sort of thinking about. So here we have uh, a troll who's gonna be like who's who on on average should be like eight feet tall, mm -hmm. five hundred some odd pounds. <laughs> Yep. Um, how like does I I don't know. Do the physics of airships change if you have a crew of <laughs> trolls versus wind windlings or like that? Anyway, that was it was a random thought that I sort of <laughs> like. Does does it make sense to have to have a? So uh, airships are kind of interesting because uh, air sailing is a talent in the game. And uh, the air sailing talent determines a lot of things about your like buoyancy and your speed. And it kind of has very little to do with uh, the weight of your vessel, it seems like. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, it's more about like the, the will and the skill of the original craftsmanship of the vessel. Um, so I, I would imagine that they could still be like overburdened if you really got into the deeper mechanics of it. Like if you got into it to the same depth as you got into like naval preparations and that kind of thing. Right. But but uh, they you just get a guy out or, or rowing, and then like mechanically, it's like make a willpower test, and your your ship books it. So, so what you're saying is, is it's magic. <laughs> yeah, you gotta want it, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you get in your big stone ship and it fly. Excellent. Well, I like it. Um, what else can I ask about? So if we say, uh, I've, I've, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten the name. It was, I got to like write it down here. It was Thunder. Thunder Sky Moot. Thunder Sky Moot. And do, do they, do they have a known sigil or they, any? They do actually. Excellent. Uh, I could, you want me to send you a link to that? Or what's the best way to share a uh, image I reference could, with you? We could, we could put it in the chat. Yeah, I'll plop it right into the main room chat. Uh, so I'll do go here and then, <laughs> now I just got to go through all the pictures I saved. Uh, Really standing the way I want, want him to have a slightly more regal bearing, like sticking his chest out as opposed to as opposed to slouching. I don't think our guy's going to be a sloucher. <laughs> it's a very proud man. Yeah. Uh, another thing that's big with trolls that we haven't touched on yet is they have those those three types of honor. Did you read about that stuff, James? Yeah, uh, no, I haven't heard about the three types of honor yet. Just that they what did they, what did it say? It said they honor. Or uh, uh, honor is like the the blood and bone uh, of uh, of troll society. Yeah, so they have their personal honor, their um, uh, clan honor, and their racial honor. And you always need to make sure that you are uh, keeping all three of those like in your heart to be a good troll kind of a thing. And if you shame one of them, you like shame all of them. And that's how you can like become an outcast. And, and then um, like the, the tragic figures of like troll lore, as far as they're concerned is uh, when you end up in a situation where you can't maintain both like your personal honor and your familial honor. Right. Like if your if your clansman does something that really uh, uh, like would ruin your like personal uh, fame or something like that, and you would need to like hurt him, then you've shamed your clan, kind of a thing. Get that? That makes me think of um, um, what was it? Isn't I, okay? You know what? I probably shouldn't say this because I I don't actually know if it's uh 100 true but in in shogun in the book shogun they Ooh. mentioned that e each each person has three hearts uh one one that they one that they show the world one that they um show their friends and family and one that they keep just for themselves that does sound familiar yeah i think I think they mentioned that in Shogun. I think it's also um, similar to a take on like uh, old Viking um, saga tragedies, like the Volsunga saga um, has like if your family does something terrible and you need to like take vengeance against them, you are now a kin slayer kind of a thing. I think there's lots of like traditions uh, that were like that. Whereas in Shogun, it was more like um, uh, the the person your duty is is different than the person you are, kind of a thing. But there there is definitely a a symmetry there. Yeah. I finally managed to get around to posting the uh, sigil for the Thunder Skies in the main room chat. Oh, excellent! I have not seen it yet. Main room voice or main ah oh, there we go main i'm just gonna really quick aha all right i'm gonna copy and copy image for anybody that doesn't have the all right so it almost looks like it's so it's two sort of skeletal hands holding a bowl full of crystals all right excellent yeah and i think uh all of the like sigils in the in this book sort of look like um i think things you'd put on like the drakars their long ships right 
So I'm sure you could take some liberties with that. But yeah, I think the the skeletal hands and the crystals are probably what's important because these guys are crystal raiders from the Twilight Peaks. So um, I'm assuming the crystals are what's really critical. Right. Excellent. Um, so question, what, mm. if, if anything, would be sort of typical in terms of armor and or gear for our friend oh. here? Ooh, baby, I, I found a good text reference for that as well from um, the old first edition uh, name givers. Um, I have both references about clothing and references about armor. Okay. So for clothing, uh, to others' eyes, a troll's unadorned clothing appears so simple as to be called primitive. Sheepskin, leather, and coarse wool are favored materials. Right. Crystal Raiders. Oh, go ahead. Oh, nothing. I was just going to make a joke. I was like, oh, so maybe we won't have like embossed leather like, <laughs> logos on on his chest. Maybe. Yeah, they, they, it sounds like they're they're generally unadorned. Uh, Crystal Raiders often steal cotton cloth or silk, which they can use for clothing if they're like good good soldiers. So if we want to like give him like a silk something that he claimed while fighting, you know, that could be a good story point. Excellent. Um, right. Highland trolls often wear sheepskin leggings, wool shirts, heavier sheepskin jerkins, that kind of stuff. Um, if they embellish their clothes, they do it with small carvings that they have created from stone, wood, or metal. Okay. And then uh, individual trolls occasionally embellish their weapons and armor by engraving simple geometric designs into the metal. Um, Highland trolls most often wear padded and hardened leather armor occasionally with plates of cold hammered iron sewn in to protect vital areas. Chain and plate mail are rare because of the sheer effort involved in mining metal ore. Um, <laughs> Crystal raiders often wear metal armor that they have taken from targets or rivals because most armor gained in this way is designed for smaller races. Crystal raiders build their elaborate suits of chain or plate by breaking apart and reforging several captured pieces of armor. Okay, so we can make it a little patchwork here. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, Excellent. that could be a fun, fun way to go. And then if you become really distinguished, that's when you get up into that weird uh, like crystal plate, crystal bucklers, crystal weapons, that kind of stuff. All right. I don't know if we I don't know. Do we want to go that far? Maybe you could have like Probably maybe it could not. be like a maybe like a Mandalorian thing where he's got like one piece with a bit of crystal on it or something like that. Yeah, that could be cool. I don't know. Like a like a pauldron or something. Yeah. Just uh like like you have to he hasn't he hasn't been you know he's he's experienced but hasn't quite gotten you know his full his full crystal his full crystal plate yet yeah british joel suggests in the chat that since the thunder sky have access to a ton of living crystal maybe he's got a crystal weapon like a crystal axe ah uh, excellent okay yep And I, was, I, I, I go ahead. to give him this very dwarven like beard. <laughs> little, like, is there is there any rules about trolls and facial hair? Uh, so I was digging through a lot of troll art. Um, I couldn't find a ton of uh, newer troll art, especially anything that you had done. So I was mostly looking at older stuff. Uh, yes, and... we've we've had a lot of uh, we've had a lot of uh, humans. Recently, when I was thinking of like uh, Iopos, they mention they mention a, yeah. a, a they introduced a or, a, or mentioned a Tuscrang, uh, like uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Family. Anyway, there mm -hmm. there, there were some the Tacombras, uh from yep. from Iopos, but other than that, it's been a lot of humans recently. So I'm I'm glad for the opportunity to draw a troll. <laughs> so one thing that uh, I wanted to touch on is there is a passion, one of the Earth Dawn uh, god adjacent beings, Thystonius, is often depicted as a troll, who's probably you know kind of the um, the the Chad ultra troll, right? So the the depiction of of ultra 
scroll male virility or whatever. Um, and he has like glorious mutton chops. Excellent. Uh, so I've posted him in the main room chat, and I think there's a few other ones. Yeah, this guy's got a beard. He does look like the epitome of Chad, doesn't he? He, he does. I mean, <laughs> I don't throw that term around just willy nilly. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, I feel better about um, I feel better about giving our giving our our, our friend here a, a glorious beard. Yeah, a lot of them uh, do have. Uh, it looks like mustaches are are rather rare. Ah. All right. Fair. Well, let's just take this bad boy. Out. And Josh does weigh in that male Highland trolls frequently sports facial hair, and I, I would agree that the art seems to bear that out. This well, guy uh, does have a, a mustache that he's even braided. Fancy. I'll post him in here. Uh, I think that removing the mustache is probably gonna is probably gonna help us out a fair okay. bit here because it'll just let us it'll give us some negative space to sort of feature uh, feature the the lower canines there, the tusks. Sure. So there we go. We'll come back for. For this a fellow with oh a braid a fancy braided mustache indeed all right <laughs> well even the one that i found even the one that i like the um there we go this one here he's got a yeah glorious mustache asymmetrical horns pointy ears oh good i think i had started pointy ears but good to know that that is canon there we go give him some pointy ears the thing that i would like to see and this is just a matter of personal preference i really like to see the moment of sort of integration with the skull uh and and the horns mm -hmm. it um and in in my opinion it's uh especially when i see i don't know like like tiefling art or or that sort of thing like the 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 moment where the where the horns hit the uh hit the hit the skin or the skull and it, you know it's often hidden behind like a uh, a strand of hair or something you never ever see it so i always like to try and make that happen yeah that it is a um a weird point uh so it's interesting to figure out how to get it drawn and make it appear something that's interesting with trolls in particular is how um, it talks about their skin having rough textures and the ridges and plating that kind of end up making their horns um, so yeah. like their, their skin can be very like rigid and a little more pointy than regular human skin. So like where their uh, horns meet their flesh could be kind of, yeah. Yeah. Let's, well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Cause it's, it's <laughs> yeah. troll, trollthelia, right? Which originally yeah. I thought might've been like a term like coined for trolls, but I, I feel like I, and again, this is un unresearched, but I feel like, uh, <laughs> like, like I actually looked up and I know it, it's an actual word um referencing like a like sort of almost like fingernail like rough bumps and and things on the skin um now when i when i imagine it when i try to come up with like the super cool version of that i imagine it like almost like i, I mean i don't want to say scales because that's not quite right but but the but the idea where it's 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 sort of like in almost like in 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 patterns or or ridges like over the face sort of like sort of like this and maybe it's got like little bumps or something uh here but i feel like i i can't i can't i can't remember anything it was it was <laughs> once it was once described to be as like no 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 it's really more like little little nubs and stuff like just sort of growing everywhere and i'm like oh, oh that's not i don't like that as much <laughs> we, is, is 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 there is there a canonical way that that trollthelia like grows on the skin well, I don't think trollthelia is a real word. It's evocative of the word polythelia, which is kind of like uh, excess, like nipple skin. So that's okay. probably what they were relating it to. But um, in like uh, older Shadowrun and things of that nature, um, they had um they they literally trolls literally had subdermal plating effectively where their skin had so many rough ridges and uh, like basically plates beneath it that were out of this uh rhinoceros texture that it would give them armor 
So uh, uh, yeah, Josh says kind of like rhino hide. Right. I think uh, that was also yeah the example that they that they gave. All right. Well, we'll I'll try not to make it look too awesome then. <laughs> All right, so we definitely want some asymmetry if we're leaning into the idea that our, our friend here has has uh, amalgamated this suit of armor from, from multiple sources. So we'll have a great big pauldron on one side and then a slightly, slightly lower one with some, I don't know, I guess some... Uh, some furry furry lining on the other side. So I did double check before I spread lies on the internet. Um, but rhinoceros horns are made of keratin in real life. So that's the same stuff as like fingernails. Right. So we don't call it trollthelia in real life. And I think we're worse off for it. <laughs> it's true. Right, where are we at here? Let's do let's do a little more fur lining just because it's fun here. And then do we go? See, I, I work I work at Ubisoft for for my for my day job, so my first instinct to always go let's add some let's add like a million straps everywhere. <laughs> Need um, eighteen belt buckles, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe we'll just give them one big one. I like that for Earth Dawn art in in general one one big like you in general it's kept simple but each in, in terms of in terms of the in terms of the big shapes it's kept fairly simple but then everything has many many layers to it so like your belt buckle has i don't know like a like a pattern embroidered into it and then a gold belt buckle and then the gold belt buckle has like a sun on it, and then it's not just a sun. The sun also has a face on it. But the number of <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting point. So you're saying, um, like, when you design things for like a video game, you find that you're designing a lot more like individual features for a character, whereas for this, you design very detailed features for a character. Um, well, it's it's just it's a different set. I mean, it's a different style really is is what it is where um recently for earth dawn things um i've i've been really inspired recently by um uh by hearthstone i guess would be one fable would be another mm -hmm. um and just arcane i guess okay uh, i can't say enough nice things about arcane Anyway, if any if anybody has not watched the cartoon Arcane on Netflix yet, you should. Ah, uh, okay, it. yeah, you absolutely do it. Um, and it's just because I like um, it's the sort of the Blizzard aesthetic in general because everything has this great sense of thickness to it, like everything. Um, everything everything has a lot of uh, a lot of three dimensionality. Um, so you, you know, as we, so for instance, as we, I don't know if you guys can see where my cursor is, but yeah, as we, we can see it. Turn the, as we sort of turn the, um, the, the end of his sort of gauntlet here, like there's, there's dedicated space, like to that's like the, so there has to be like the rim of the, of the gauntlet before, like before his, uh, before his hand comes out and then and, and everything that they have has like that depth. And if we were to say that this was like a sort of a different level up here we'll give it a little bit more thickness and then so i i like i like representing that for when 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 we when i do stuff for earth dawn everything everything has like again everything is layered right nothing mm -hmm. nothing nothing is ever just one thing so when you put um you know so rather than if we were to do like a I and mean, it might be different i guess for like an elven gauntlet so for an elven gauntlet you put a few more fancy curves on it and then if you if it, so rather than having like an extra thick layer of of leather around it, the outside maybe instead you it's more like a more like a like like an engraved or embossed thing. But even even then for Earth Dawn, I would probably give it again. You, there would be just just a little bit of that 
of that sort of shape in here so you can mm -hmm. see the the depth the thickness the thickness of the of the material anyway nice i think that's interesting and and adding the materials together and showing the very the, the like different levels and the complexity of it for some reason it, it feels very similar to like mechanically how magic items like learning the complexity of the item you know makes it more powerful so right. I don't know, it, it feels very thematically similar visually to mechanically excellent yeah i'll i'll take that absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it but, might be uh, a coincidence but it feels that way <laughs> the, so the so the um so i guess I, in terms of speaking about the the artistic inspirations again so so uh hearthstone and that's and again Maybe I'll I'll use Hearthstone as the example, but sort of Blizzard in general for for the for the thickness for the chunkiness of of everything. But then Fable, one of my favorite things about Fable, and to be fair, I haven't fully kept up on like Fable Two and Fable Three and and all the rest of it. But one of the things that always struck me about Fable art was a lack of um, straight lines, so that even like even if you were drawing something like a fishing pole, like it was like the fishing pole was like a stick that like did this <laughs> and then you get right you get a little thicker it's it's like wrapped or something um and it just it uh i don't know it's it's a it's a look and very in in my own style when i'm not really thinking about it i generally tend to stick to fairly fairly straight lines so as as i go through i always try to remind myself nope nope make it <laughs> <laughs> up that line uh, exactly so I like that you say uh, you haven't quite kept up with uh, Fable because you didn't play Fable 2, and that game came out um, 16 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't quite kept up with it. No, no, I've been <laughs> far too busy keeping up on Far Cry's and Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, and then what else? What else did I say? Arcane. Um, yeah, arcane is is just brilliant. I can't I can't say enough nice things about it. They have this the sort visual of, style on that was was crazy. Yeah, techno techno magic type type stuff, and the way that everything like they they managed every there's um sort of a term in cinematography that you'll hear every once in a while to say every frame a painting, where if you in in theory in in a what what I'll what I'll I guess I'll say is a uh, a good movie well it, it, <laughs> boom <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> um you should be able to pause at any frame in the movie and have it be composed in such a way that it 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 could be it could be like a like like a maybe not a renaissance painting but it is it it is composed like a painting and the first time i watched arcane i think i think my my jaw was just uh, just had uh, was my mouth was just open the whole time um i couldn't believe what i was what i was watching i was i was able to just uh, uh able to turn off that sort of critical brain i was just i was enjoying it so much <laughs> that that i was just able to turn my brain off and just and just enjoy it um and then i watched it a second time and just as as an exercise i was like you know what i'm gonna close my eyes i'm gonna pick like a random minute mark like 15 23 and i would just fast forward to 15 23 and whatever frame i got and and it was it was flawless every i mean is it possible that there's a bad frame in there it's possible <laughs> but i could not find one yeah well with uh with animation uh it's got to be uh much easier at least for you to be try to avoid those in between frames because you animate on on what twos and threes usually right is that what it is every two frames you move your character uh it it depends you can animate on twos it's a it's a stylistic choice i feel like these days where if you look at um like into the spider verse mm -hmm. was and it was animated on twos um or uh what was another one I just watched it. Um, the uh, the Dragon Prince, also on Netflix, uh, was also animated on twos, and it's a different it's a different style. It's not it's not one that I work with because we deal with uh, motion capture, okay, uh, like most of the time. And so mo motion capture, you get every single frame 
uh, you, you get mm -hmm. data on on every single frame and um, not that that's bad because it, it certainly lets you it certainly gives you a greater deal of control over every you know any any given moment sure um, but uh, yes yeah, so, so I don't know some sometimes sometimes it leads to people uh, fussing uh, too too much <laughs> too much over <laughs> where I uh, uh, yeah, I where you say you don't. Okay, this is the third time you've seen it. If that frame hasn't bothered you before, we should probably just leave it. Oh, it won't take you. <laughs> it won't take you so long to go fix. Just go fix it. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll... So you're you're saying then you since arcane was done with motion capture, you think that a lot more of it was just like they had the motion data and were animating over it. No, I think they literally just took the time to 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 do that like i think they they were able to i see i see messages in the chat but i haven't read it read that. Yeah. miles was animated on twos until he gets animated on ones which is changes the yeah fluidity which looks a bit yes yes because uh yeah J josh is 100 percent correct and the background is always animated on ones which makes him look super out of sync at first right. but yeah animation uh is cool and i appreciate it as something that i'm not capable of so i'm always glad to be a part of these art streams and learn new stuff <laughs> all right so we have our dude sort of taking shape here he still looks a little sort of squat to me he's still reading more like a dwarf with horns to me right now so maybe he needs to be leggier i think that's exactly the case so we're just gonna grab his top half and I could make the canvas bigger but I don't think I will we're gonna do just a little perspective so it makes him look like we're looking up at him just a little more <laughs> Paul boy yeah there we go that's not bad excellent it's coming in the guys give the guy's legs back There, that's yeah. feeling a little more like eight feet tall. Now I think his feet are too big. That's fine. He doesn't want to fall over. That's, you know what? That's true. <laughs> so we'll give him, what will we give him? You know what? We're going to make his feet, I'm going to give him an actual shape here, like sort of interesting boots. Like if, like if he's, cause he's up, he's in his, stone airship right mm -hmm. and he's probably like i feel like his sheepskin leggings should be fine we'll give him some we'll give him some texture for his sheepskin leggings and then uh would he have like i don't know i guess i'm sort of imagining this could he have like wraps or something around his legs just for insulation yeah. does, he, does he need more does he need armor on his legs i don't know <laughs> eight feet tall you're probably more likely to get hit in your legs um i mean i think uh if we imagine that he's usually on a vessel i i i kind of like the idea that he's probably got like a wrap sort of thing on his feet and it isn't super heavily armored let's see what the chat says <laughs> viking rust pants says british droll uh let's see Here's some herringbone leg wraps. Excellent. I don't know. Just right, throwing out little... ideas. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can what we can do here. <laughs> um, yes, I guess I imagine them being fuzzier, more for insulation rather than sure. But we can just make them fuzzy. That's fine. Uh, can okay, we just can... make them fuzzy? There we go. How do I make this? How do I see this as an image? Curse you, Google. Just fill that out. So now he's just sort of built 
sort of built like a refrigerator right now. Like he's just very, <laughs> it's very boxy. What if we gave him like a big gut? Do that, yeah. What if we just like kind of like that? There we go. He's looking he's looking a little less boxy. I don't think I did that quite right. I think I can distort this first and then warp it. There we go. Have it hanging straight down still. There we go. Oh. That's that's a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Floofy. Just ignore the real world boots at the bottom. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh! I clicked on your link, and now I'm going to see pants. I think. <laughs> anyway, we'll. All right. All right. We'll come back to that. <laughs> Need to do it as a step, I think. All right. So I haven't really got him holding anything. Do we have? Um. Do Do we have like sort of a an iconic? Oops. Um. And I, what am I trying to say? Come on, here we go. There we are. Uh, an iconic Sky Raider weapon. So, so um, tr Sky Raiders typically want to wield uh, two-handed things. It says that they want big, sturdy weapons where they can bring their strength to bear. Excellent. Uh, and then I dug through. Um, some art and we were talking about crystal weapons but i'm going to show you some options that are uh i have some crystal weapons and i have some not crystal weapons and i'll let you know what chat says uh all right i like the crystal axe someone mentioned i do have a picture of a crystal axe in here so we'll include that one as well do i want to just delete this maybe not we'll try it on a different layer He's just he's looking a little too a little too chill right now. <laughs> it's one of those rare moments where he's at rest. Yeah, that's it. And then here's the crystal ones. Ah, excellent. Coming up, hang on. Oh, that's a great big crystal sword, eh? And then I have an axe coming at you next. I know. What do you, what are we thinking? Is this is he uh is he an axe guy or a sword guy? Well, you're the drawer, so it's it's your call. The the chat's been voting for axes, but you know. All right. This is cool. All right. So we're gonna take this then real quick, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat. I can do this with. I don't have to use my mouse to do this. I have a stylus. I also have a picture of a crystal shield, even though I don't think we're going to use it. So I'll throw it out here. Because darn it, I found it as reference. So it's coming out. Love these. Well defined lines makes selecting things super easy. Right. Would you sand it like this? Maybe. I don't know. You put it down. That's a great big axe. <laughs> I mean, it, if it's a big two-handed axe, it would be uh, pretty beastly. Let's see if I can find a uh, figure out how big it would be size-wise by comparing some real world things. Real world things, Pshaw, it's magic, <laughs> it's fine. Bigger is better if you're a Sky Raider. <laughs> On his way over here still. Ah. 
Okay, so in order to try to get the perspective, let's try to stand it up as straight as we can. And it'd probably be, no, that's not quite right. So that gives us a little bit. Oh, that gives us a little bit. <clears throat> but now it's way too skinny. All right, never mind. Scratch that. We might have to redraw the head. My clever idea to just steal someone else's art is falling apart. What's the other option? Oops, what would the other Option B. I think we eventually we just have to make a call. A eh? just we come here. No, I think I like it better with his hand sort of holding the hilt and it being like upside down like this. I think. I think I like that better. So looking at the melee weapons table, a troll axe, which this presumably is, is listed as being the same size as a pole axe. And a pole axe is a real weapon that is basically at least five feet long, so more than a meter and a half for people okay. who, who don't use freedom units. Um, and up to uh, two meters long. So okay. it, it is a big boy, and uh, that is well within the, the realm of even what the mechanics say. Okay, so if we say that our friend here is eight feet tall, like an average troll, and that mm -hmm. means a six-foot tall weapon would come up to, like, here. Alrighty. Big boy. So we'll just do away with this and if he's not if he's so i'm just trying to figure out what's what's a relaxed way to hold something it's almost it's all in you're holding something relaxed it's almost it could be like leaning towards him like like brace sort of like back over his. yeah well that's interesting all right let's try that So in this case, though, if it were leaning towards him, I almost want it to be like up here. Maybe he has a jump. Sure. <laughs> I go, why not? Hey, eh? yeah, why not? <laughs> and if it was like uh, in his hand and leaning as well, you could always do it that way. I don't know. It's either way. If we, put, if we put a hand here, and that means his elbow would come out kind of like this, and we don't need any of this anymore. You know what? There you go. All right, I'm down. Go like that. <laughs> we found a pose. <laughs> well, we had half a one. I'm still not super happy with his other arm. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll need to add this something is fun in the other arm. <laughs> this is exactly the sort of thing you have time for when you only have two hours to, to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fiddle with every single one of his joints on your two-hour uh, stream. <laughs> Oh, so what this wait, sort wait, of wait. suggests my to thing? me, though, is we might be seeing rather than like a double. Really quick. Rather than he wants to yeah. mess with every joint because he needs to be very tired because that gives me an edge in the competition coming up. I'm just gonna <laughs> make him really tired, Kyle. <laughs> Work him hard. <laughs> very mercenary, Andy. I like it. So we'll have it sort of go back, sort of behind behind his head like that. Wow, this is an entirely unreasonable axe, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Troll Sky Raiders are entirely unreasonable as well. <laughs> All right, so we'll have some shenanigans here. Maybe we'll get like little crystalline growths or something where 
like the crystal almost like grew around the hilt or something. I like it. And then we'll give it a bit of a counterweight on the bottom. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a fancy counterweight. Maybe he likes to turn it around and stab people every once in a while. Ooh, stabby counterweight. All right, now, crystalline shapes, outstanding. Just going to sort of give it like a faceted ideal here. I don't know. We'll come back to it. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be time. Placeholder. Yeah. We'll give him a thumb. We'll give uh, him I'm sure thumb. adding textures to things doesn't take forever, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's always the well in my opinion it's always the last thing that you right. should do just um starting with uh sorry for, from a from like an art from an artistic standpoint always line shape value form color texture is usually the order in which we we build these ideas so i'm sort of mixing together shape line and form sort of all together here so it's a color color will be coming eventually <laughs> but i mean the the idea being again if we could do, go back to art 101 if the most basic unit of drawing is just the line then the next step becomes to make a shape so we make a to make a shape out of lines mm -hmm. And then uh, you know what we'll go. Well, you know what we'll go ahead and we'll do a cube. And then next, uh, value. So in this case, if our light is coming from this way, let's say we have our darkest shadow on this side. That's our lights and our darks is our value. We probably have a slightly less dark thing on this side. And then uh, and then form. Form is is how you sort of blend the value. Now cube is a bad example. A sphere would have been a better example, but uh, form is the blending of light and dark. So if this this side is farther away from the light, so therefore ah. it gets a little bit darker. Uh, and then after after that, then we can add things like color. Because if you're if if each each step sort of carries information for for the rest of it. So if you if you try and if you try to move into if you try to move into value before your shape, before you're actually happy with your shapes, that then I mean, it you're you're it's never going to look as good as right. as it could, um, just because uh, if uh, I think I mentioned this last year with drawing like big shapes first and then moving into little shapes because if your big shapes aren't right, then no amount of fancy little shapes on top of your big shapes are gonna are gonna help as much as you're you're hoping that they will. It's um, like uh, are... spending a lot of time polishing a uh, rough draft and then deciding that you don't even like the, this whole section kind of a thing, right? It, yes, exactly. It's, yes, putting, trying to write a final draft out of, or a, a final draft out of a rough draft that you're not even really happy with. Right. Oh, no, that's not it. I got to go back and we got to, there we go. So I'm, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy that. No, I'm not going to copy that. I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to delete. Then I'm going to paste. Because, like I said, I'm not super happy with his pose. So we're going to try to give him a better pose. And to see, there we go. That's. That's a little. I just no, not Alt. Maybe Shift. No, shoot. I never remember how to put. I don't remember how to rotate the joints. That's okay. There we go. Just a little bit more at attention. A little less. A little less. A little less casual. Put a little bit more energy into his into his position. I like it. I like it too. Are you at a point where we can stop here in a minute or pause? Sorry, technically. Um, yes, I think. Um, I guess if if in the first hour we could get through the black and white portion of uh, 
of this, then then I will be I will be happy. We can do the do the color and things in the in the back. You still have a few minutes. If I, you need I have. It. Okay, I might I might take them then. Okay, okay. just let me know when you're ready. The, excellent. Well, just just ping me at, at five minutes. I'm just gonna try to get these. Technically, we're at five about, minutes, but it doesn't take long to stop and restart. Oh. So. Okay. Well, let let let. <laughs> ping me when ping me when we need to stop. Eleven. Okay. Or well, for me it's almost noon. Whenever the hour hits, just go. Okay, James, stop, and I'll okay. go. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll fiddle forever. That's it. Da -da. So I mean, this might be a good opportunity to ask the chat or anybody anybody here. Um, does anybody else have ideas for the iconic characters? I had sort of this idea in my head where I, you know to try to make it accessible to people new to Earth Dawn. Let let's go with some Earth Dawn um, archetypes or, or or tropes before we start trying to subvert everyone's expectations. But um, if anybody has ideas, I would love to hear them. Yeah, does anybody have any, uh, if you have any suggestions for like uh, name giver race plus uh, discipline plus possibly uh, origin location, go ahead and pop it into the main room chat. Uh, Tiskrang Swordmaster, Earthdawn Josh says, and uh, oh boy, do we have a surprise for you tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, Orc Cavalrymen, two people say. Uh, I will note that one down. Obsidian Gauntlet, big and dumb. <laughs> and ugly and rude. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he doesn't have ears. <laughs> Doesn't mean he can't hear your insults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Windling Elementalist. So you know what I really need to do? I really need to decide where the light is coming from. We just come straight down, maybe. That might be easiest. Uh, we also have someone saying dwarf wizard to remind people that in Earth Dawn dwarves aren't this non magical race like they can be in other settings. Excellent. That's actually a really good idea. I quite like that. Elf illusionist gets mentioned. Some really good ones. Yes, we had we had uh, that's our the dwarf weaponsmith. Um, yes, the one the one that we're planning on tomorrow again, sticking with that idea of of Earth on specific classes and Earth on specific races. We're we're gonna go with a a Tiskrang Swordmaster tomorrow. And with that, everyone just hold with us. I'm going to stop the recording and restart it. Three, if I can get my cursor thing to go where I want it to go. Why are you over there? Oh, because I'm looking at James's. That doesn't help. All right, one second. Uh -huh.